many of you were around in 1980? Better question, how many of you were not around in 1980? Go ahead and raise your hand. Go ahead and look around, everybody else. Look at those. Those two people in this room were not around in 1980. I don't mean to start this off and make you feel old. My goal is just to show I was eight years old in 1980. 1980 was a very interesting year for most people. 1980, the, most, the best movie in the world came out, Empire Strikes Back. Changed a lot of us young boys and some girls' lives right there. Another thing that happened is Mount St. Helens erupted. Anybody remember that? Mount St. Helens erupting? Yeah, my mom was actually flying over Mount St. Helens at the time where it started to erupt and it freaked her out. It was really crazy. Anybody remember who shot JR? And also 1980 right there. And Caddyshack was a little smart for me at the time, but how many of you really enjoyed the Bill Murray Caddyshack? Yeah, all right. Yeah. And uh, how many remember this, Miracle on Ice? I mean, the country was just reeling off of this. So summer of 1980, I was eight years old. And all this was going on in the world, and the only thing that was happening in my world was I was standing on a sidewalk, watching my father pack up all of his stuff into our little Honda hatchback, and drive away. And I remember standing there being so frustrated. I remember standing there going, now how come it is that me and T-ball, and I played T-ball, anybody else play T-ball? Anybody realize you can strike out in (laughs) T-ball? I've proven it over and over and over again. But I remember when I was striking out in T-ball and hitting that stupid thing over and over again, my parents always told me, Dino, no matter how many times you strike out, never give what? up. And when I was younger, I had a speech impediment. I couldn't pronounce my R's. Couldn't pronounce my R's. So you think kids made fun of me a little bit back then? Absolutely, every day. But my parents said, Dino, you're going to go to a speech therapist, and I want you to, no matter how, many, how much the kids are making fun of you or how much you feel frustrated with it, I never want you to stop trying. My mom, she was a, a neat freak. Anybody have a mom that was a neat freak? Was, like every day was clean, and we, she didn't believe in maids back then or anything like that. It was everything was clean. Matter of fact, I would laugh at my friends who would complain about doing uh, vacuuming and dishes on the weekends <laughs> because vacuuming and dusting was an everyday chore for us before school. Weekends were for polishing and waxing. <laughs> That's how freaked my mom was about it. And whenever we wouldn't get it right, my parents would always come to us and say, Dino, don't just do your job. Go the extra, what? Mile. Mile. Yet here I was, at eight years old, standing on a sidewalk, watching my parents. Did they give up? Yep. Did they stop trying? Yep. Did they not go the extra mile? In my eight-year-old mind, I knew this was wrong. And I knew that this moment in my life, at eight years old, was going to change my life forever. I knew that... I would be that kid, because back in 1980, divorce wasn't as rampant as it is right now. It wasn't as common in my little town in California, and so I would be that kid. In church, when I'd walk by people in the halls, I'd get that look of, oh. And I knew this was happening. I knew I would never have a Christmas together with my parents again. As a matter of fact, I was wrong. It took almost 20 years years for my parents to be in the exact same room together again without there being animosity. And the odd thing about it, it was Christmas. My parents spent the night at my house on Christmas when I had three little ones. And they have no idea about this, but it was the best Christmas present I've ever received in my life. But it took 20 years for that to happen. So this is me and this is my wife. My wife Shannon and I do our business together, the business of marriage. And I'll tell you why that started in just a moment. But basically what we do is we take business principles that you've all used to be successful in your business. The reason I know that is because you're here. And you would not be here unless you understood how to have successful principles in one form or another. Some of you more than not. And so all I did is I looked at it and said, well, if that's successful, then why can't we take those same principles, those little tiny things daily things and put them into your relationship and have the same type of success. So that's what we created. This is my kids, all three of them. They're three under three when we had them, obviously, right now. (laughs) They're 16, 15, and 14. We did not plan it that way, but once we figured out what was causing it, we just stopped doing that altogether (laughs) and just said no more. And uh, like they said, 
We just got done in December with going around the country for a year-long trip, 13 months actually, across the country, 43 states, 35,000 miles for an entire year. Best year of my life, amazing times, and uh, cannot even express into words what it meant to me to be able to do that with my kids before they go off and live their lives. Thank you.